Uh, our next right. guest has been working to create positive change in the sports world since publicly coming out as bisexual in 2019. Mm -hmm. now, now our Kate Russell is sharing his story in a new memoir. It's called The Yards Between Us and explores his love for football, his identity, and the tension he felt between his private and public lives. R.K. Russell, thank you so much for joining us. Oh my gosh, thank you for having me. This is awesome. Uh, are you a fan of Harry Potter? I was a fan of Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like Harry a thousand stop. years ago. Yes, I was. I'm a fan of Daniel Radcliffe. Let me yeah. put it that way. Yeah, aren't we all? <laughs> That's Harry Potter himself. Uh, congratulations on the new memoir. Oh, thank That's you. That's huge. Thank you so much. Now, obviously, we said you know you came out in 2019. That was a big, big thing to do, especially in the world of sports, mm -hmm. nonetheless. Uh, so, how do we get to the point where you were like, I have to write about this in a memoir, or I have to write a memoir? My coming out in 2019 was such a celebration for me and such a big moment, and I hope that it encouraged and inspired people. But a lot of the questions that I got was, how do you get to a moment like that? Mm -hmm. Especially being a black man in America, especially being bisexual, and also being an NFL player. So yeah. that was something that I couldn't do in just a short video or an essay. It needed to be a detail of the journey of my life, of the people who've supported me and gotten me here, mm -hmm. the challenges that I've faced, and the things that I've learned about myself and are still continuing to learn about myself. So that felt best to be a memoir and to sit down and write it. I love that you say you couldn't just do it like in a quick blip yeah. on social media. Which is how most things are done Which these days. Which it is, it is. And you, you, you were able to control the narrative. And I want to personally thank you for talking about this because I come from a huge football family. Um, and for us, it was more about being a, a boy in a sport and mental health. And what you did was bring up the idea that we're humans. Let's talk about mental health. Um, which can be a dark subject, but I understand you're going to turn this into a show? A with comedy a, with a series, comedy. nonetheless. <laughs> with a com which, I, which is like, there's no better way to do it. Yeah. The best, truly. Thank you. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. I feel like mental health can be such a dark and heavy subject. These all can be. Any yeah. identity, um, social injustice, uh, sport, masculinity. Mm -hmm. But I think it's always kind of so dark because we talk about it after the fact, after the damage has already right. been done or the trauma has already kind of been experienced. I'm like, let's get ahead of it. Let's right. talk about what it's like, you know, to deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis, to get help, to, to tell family and be embraced by your community. And I feel like a comedy was the best way to do that. I so what can it. you tell us about this comedy show? I, I'm, I'm <laughs> all ears. We love ourselves some comedy. Anything you can share? I can say that I've also been partnered with Gabrielle Union on this. She's oh. been a co-executive producer. Oh, not just, Gab Union. He's yeah. Oh, please. Me he just Gab casually Union. dropped Gabrielle Gab Union. Union. Well, she's amazing. And if she anyone is, who's, who's known her personally or knows her career yeah, or the right. thing that she does, she just, she gets it. She understands. She knows allyship in a way that mm -hmm. I think very few people do. Um, also, just being a woman in this industry that right. is so male-driven at times. Like, her voice, her POV, I mean, I feel like I'm constantly learning from her, even though this is supposed to be, like, my story. Sure. Um, hey, and she, she's just, right. yeah, she's an amazing, an amazing person and collaborator on this. I wonder, when you were taking your journey um, before you came out, did you have those champions? Because we talked about Gabrielle Union being a yeah. champion. Was there a coach? Was there a teacher? Was there a friend or a family member who was like... You got this. Um, or was it something that you really kept inside? It was something that I mostly kept inside, but um, my best friend, Joe Gilliam, who I met at Purdue University when we were both there playing, uh, was one of the first people that I told anything about my sexuality to. And him being, you know, a football player and, and what I looked at as, like, the vision of, like, the, the ultimate man, sure. masculine, sure. you know, smart, great yeah. athletically. Uh, and just to get that love and acceptance from him mm. up here as well was so huge for me and so big for me as a person. You know, I, me and my mom, she's my best friend. She's here with me today in the studio. And even though, you know, it took us a while to have the conversation about identity, she had always supported me um, as a person, as a creative, as an athlete, uh, like I said, as a black man mm -hmm. in this country, which can be very, very tough, sure. very hard to do. Yeah. Um, so those are two people. I, I've also had, you know, brothers, friends, family, coaches. Uh, I was very supported. It was really just about my journey with me and trying to accept who I was and allow people in in that way. Um, I think that's when I received the most genuine support that I, fe I felt in my life. I, I, I love that for you. It's, it's so important, and I know a lot of people don't have it, but I was wondering if you might be able to talk to us about the significance specifically <clears throat> of coming out as bisexual, because it's often um, an identity that's misunderstood, and, but research has shown that bisexual yeah. identities make up 
actually most of the LGBTQ community. So why, I wonder if we might be able to dive into that a little bit with you. Of course. I think that a lot of the views um, that are perpetuated in our society feel very black and white, mm. you know, feel right. very, very straight true. or gay, and anything that lives between kind of the margins or in the intersections is, is too much to yeah. handle or just misunderstood. A more race by and bisexuality is one of those things. I feel like a lot of people don't come out, come out as bisexual because we kind of get the reaction of like, no, you're not. Right. Um, you know, that doesn't exist. Yeah, there's uh -huh. there's a there's yeah. a instant disbelief. Or even for me, I got well. Then why would you come out if you could still, you know, be with a woman? And I'm mm -hmm. like, love oh, doesn't work that way. That's right. You know, what I mean, relationship and identity doesn't work that way. My partner doesn't define uh, who I am. You know, they're just an extension of hopefully love and joy and happiness um, as it's supposed to be. So coming out as bisexual was specifically important to me. I also didn't see that representation before, right. mm -hmm. which is what took me so long on my journey to even realize I was bisexual because mm -hmm. everyone's telling me it was A or B. And I was mm. like, there's another it's option. Very true. Here. Yeah, I, 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 we love boxes in oh. American society. <laughs> yeah. We love a box, a box and a making label. it nice and neat, mm -hmm. making it nice and neat. We're now in 2023. The passage of time is a miraculous thing. I mm -hmm. always say to my friends and my loved ones and my children, where do you think we still need to improve? Because I'm fully entrenched in this world as the mom of a 17-year-old boy and a 14-year-old boy, and they have friends, and I will tell you. I, my youngest said, today, Lily is Ian. And I'm like, okay, great. And he's like, they might be Lily again next week, but this week they are Ian. And yes. I thought to myself, good for you, and good for the parents. Yes. That is one tiny little piece. What is your observation of it? What do we still need to do? Yeah. You know, I think we can grow in all areas, but I think the biggest message and kind of the biggest thing that we can apply to, whether it be to the fight against sexism or misogyny or homophobia, racism, is just empathy. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's something that we can always work on as people to empathize with other people like us, not like us, to listen and learn and be respectful and open to growth. You know, just because you were taught a certain thing doesn't mean that there aren't more lessons out there to learn and more perspectives that we can hopefully see through or at least listen and, and, and trust and, mm -hmm. and care for. So I think it's all about empathy. It's about growing that as a human being and mm -hmm. continuing to nurture that mm -hmm. um, with other people. And using empathy. your platform as a superstar. Speaking of which, any really chance uh, in any capacity, not just as a player, uh, that you would return to the NFL? Do you have that desire, in any, again, in any capacity maybe to help lead coach. by example, yeah. coach, mentor, anything like that? I love football. I will always love football. I've seen the great things that has done in my life. The community has given me the friendships, um, the values that I have honed and, and the traits that I now embody and hold near. I will continue to work with the NFL in any capacity that they welcome me and also any capacity I feel they need it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think sport in turn in football culture is bigger than just the NFL. I think we focus on it because it's the professional right, league sure. and it's, you know, kind of the top tier. But there's so much in sports that comes that starts at youth mm -hmm. and starts with the children. And I think that is kind of a missed opportunity, even with the NFL, to engage with their mm -hmm. young fans yeah. and talk mm -hmm. about what it means to be a football player in this That's world right. and what it means to be a teammate, not yes. just on the field, but off the field. Yes. Ah, we always say sports is the biggest and the best metaphor for life. Yeah. 100%. Thank you so much for joining us.